Hi friends, this is Chris with Josephine's Designs. I am back in our 2020 vision. This is a devotional put out by By the Well for God, and we are on day seven. So I'm super excited. Whoops. Well, I keep trying to turn there. There we go. All right, we are literally halfway. We are at the halfway point. So let's pray. We'll get started. We'll go through the devotional, and then we'll work in our journal. All right, friends. Dear Lord, thank you for today. Thank you so much for this time to be with all my dear sweet friends here, and I pray that you will bless each of us as we come to sit before you this day and to try to understand, learn, work through this devotional, and apply it to our lives. God, we know that each and every author that you have brought into this group of incredibly creative women and a man, I think there's a man in there, um, please, God, teach us um, what your intention was. And we know that, that your word is living, and what I may get out of it may be different than somebody else's, but that's okay. And God, thank you so much for that freedom in you to be different, that we each have an individual and different walk. So Lord, guide our words, guide our thoughts, help us think through what it is that you're trying to teach us and help us to serve you well. Lord, be with each and every person who wrote this devotional and the, the By the Well for God team. Pray that you would bless them. And Lord, please be with each and every listener who is a part of this channel. And Lord, help us to serve you well. In your son's name I pray. Amen. Okay, friends. So, let's get started. So, all right. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I, I mean... I have spent the weekend kind of working ahead because I knew I would be gone tomorrow. So today is Sunday, and I'm going to be gone Monday. I leave at 6 a.m. to go take care of my grandbaby. And then I come back tomorrow night at probably, I don't know, 6.30 or 7. We'll see. It depends on when they get off work. But, um, yeah, you you can't keep this Mimi Chris away. So, you know, I'm super excited. So, um, but I wanted to make sure, and I think it's very interesting that the day that I'm going to be traveling, it is my favorite. It's probably my life first. Um, anybody who's followed this channel knows how much Pro uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 have meant to me. It was my first, like, memorizing as an adult. And um, I memorize, oh, I've got tea here. Sorry guys, I spilled the tea. I was putting my tea in my tea thingy so it'd stay, uh, stay cool. But, um, anyway, sorry. When I was in college, I remember a friend having me help her in what was called GAs, or Girls in Action. I can't, oh, well, maybe it wasn't GAs. Maybe it was just discipleship. Anyways, and so we had like the preschool group, and this was one of her verses, and I think about this, and I think, oh, those little guys could, n I would never ask little guys to memor memorize these two verses together, but it so impacted me, and, um, and I had done some memorization, but memorizing doesn't come very easily for me, like so many of you guys probably feel the same way. Some of you, it's just done. Um, I have a husband and two out of my three children and my third one I think has a version of this. They literally have photographic memories. And I'm not saying they don't have to work at memorizing, but it is so, you know, read it three, four times, it's done. It's locked in. It's there for life. And I, I can literally see my husband remembering things from 30 some odd years ago. And I'm watching him and he'll say, hold on, let me, let me find that. And bam, there it is. Or he'll speak a verse, and I'm like, when did you learn that verse? Well, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, <laughs> you realize that was like 30 some odd years ago? But um, but I think for me, it's a blessing to work through it. And I see it as that now. I mean, at first I was kind of like, gee, God, I wish I could have that. But you know what? I didn't, I didn't, he didn't give that gift to me. And that's okay, because... This verse tells me why. So let's get started. So this is Trust Over Heart, and this is by Jessa. And again, these are the creative team of By the Well for God. And um, I, a lot of these ladies I've seen, except for Lori. Lori's the one who owns this, um, who owns By the Well for God. And I think she does do some videos. But um, if you go on YouTube, you can see a lot of these um, uh, creative people and or the other social media, the Instagram, places like that, and they will have examples of how they've taken like a 
you know, part of a devotional or a tool that they have in the shop and then they'll, you know, work in their Bibles or however else they are using those tools. So these guys are amazing. And if you can find them on YouTube, follow them because they're going to do 10 times, 100 times better than I'm going to do. So anyways, let's get going. Okay. All right. So Trust Over Heart by Jessa. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean in on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your He will make straight your paths. Proverbs three five and six. Sorry, I have it memorized a different version, and as my husband says, sometimes I mix two versions together. <laughs> but anyways, okay, read it again slowly this time. This time, and let the verse sink in. Okay, here we go. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. That's a hard one. In all your ways, everything you do, acknowledge Him. And He will make straight your paths. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. So, trust with heart and knowledge. There are a lot of hard truths packed in, verse, in, in just two verses that challenge us, eventually unlocking the perfect guidance of God. But... Are we truly willing to do this? And I didn't start that, and I probably should have, because that's a really good question. Are we truly willing to do this? Um, trust. And she, she explains it like this. Trusting God through every situation, no matter what your eyes see, your, eye, your mind says, or your heart feels. Can you trust God that way? Sometimes something feels good, we feel it must be right. But the Spirit calls us in the opposite direction. We think, Lord, this can't be what you want from me. But what if this dark and twisted road filled with hurt and pain is what is meant for us? Would you pick the path God is showing you over the sunny yellow brick road, calling you? Yeah, I'm going to be honest, probably not. You know, I mean, unless I know specifically that God called me to that, I I don't, I, I think we've, we've been down some pretty rough things. And, you know, throughout my life and my marriage and my, you know, raising kids and, you know, and now almost post raising kids. And I'm not sure I would always pick the hardest path unless God specifically said, this is what I want you to do. Um, yeah, I know. I'm being honest. Heart. The center of all our emotions. It's where we find small souvenirs of years of love, pain, and laughter. I'm going to read that again. Because this is so true. This isn't the physical heart pumping blood. This is, in a spiritual um, description, what our heart is about. The center of all our emotions a good description. Um, it's where we find our small souvenirs of years of love, pain, and laughter. I love that description. It's so beautifully written. It's where we tuck our deepest desires and hardest pains. But it's also deceiving. We cannot trust it to lead us impartially. I don't know about you, but yeah, I, I, I'd pick the yellow path, the yellow brick road, if, if, it, if it could avoid pain and heartache. Sure, unless God told me. It's no wonder Proverbs counsels us, keep your heart with all vigilance. Otherwise, we lose ourselves to our emotions with each new desire that our hearts chased. I thought a lot about that today. I've been watching a little bit of the creativation in um, Arizona, and I'd, I'd love to go next year. I really, really would. It's, it's going to be on my bucket list. Sorry, my little oven's going off. I haven't eaten today. Um, no, I had a banana. There you go. <laughs> so, and it's, uh, it's what, like almost four o'clock. Um, but I recognize that if I went there because I love all kinds of crafts and I love to learn new types of skills and crafts, I would have to be careful because. I'm on an, I, I am literally at a point where I am like waking up thinking not another dime. I went yesterday to pick up some things for a Valentine um, anniversary project and I'm going to share it with you guys in a haul, but after this I'm using what I have. I'm blooming where I'm planted. 
and I, you know, I had to think through now, I can't go to creativation till I have broken that habit because my heart sees something, it thinks, oh yeah, I can bless blah, 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 blah with that. And then it's just too much. I can't get everything done. It's just too, too much. So, I agree, our heart can misdirect us. If we don't slow down and not react impulsively, then we can be obedient to God. Our hearts can be trained to seek Him first before we act. I know, and I have so much to learn on that. Okay, acknowledge. When we acknowledge God first and foremost, we can't go wrong. So, just kind of what I was just saying there. And I... This is a great statement for your journal, for your Bible journaling, for whatever you're doing. We acknowledge God first and foremost. Uh, when we acknowledge God first and foremost, we cannot go wrong. When God leads our plans, He takes the pa He takes path. Pardon me. I'm sorry, guys. When God leads our plans, we take paths that honor Him and His purpose for us. Our hearts then align with His heart and His plan for our lives. That is amazing. That is just flat out amazing. That when we seek God, just like I talk about Paul walking down the road, looking towards Jesus every step of the way, looking to God for answers, looking to God for guidance. All I can say is that when we seek Him with our whole heart, and we've talked about that in this devotional, we seek Him in every part. All of a sudden, we can hear Him. Our heart will desire what He wants for us because we desire Him. So it's amazing how we train our hearts. You know, there's a scripture that says, Train up a child in the way he should go. When he's old, he will not depart from it. Think about that. If we train our hearts to be seeking Him, that we acknowledge God first and foremost in everything. Wow. Could we be walking on this earth that close with Jesus? Could our heart immediately seek God instead of our flesh or whatever we think we want? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, trusting the Lord is by far the hardest thing I faced in my walk with Him. Trusting is not only me saying it, but living it. That's another great line <laughs> for your journaling, or a launching point for journaling. Trust is not only me saying it, but living it. I can say things all day long. Do as I say, not as I do. Right? No. No. I mean... I have to be honest, you know, we raise our kids 24-7. There are things that I wish, you know, I'm glad my kids got to see us go through things and how things worked out. I'm also, there are things in my life where I think, wow, that was a lot, you know, was it, maybe it was too much, you know, and, and I think, but I always try to be really real with my children. I always tried to be truthful, whether it was my truth, other people's truths, whatever it was, because... We, my husband and I both came into this marriage with dysfunction, generational sin, however you want to describe it. And I wanted it to stop. Stop here. Stop. So let me acknowledge the sin and God willing help me work on the sin. I didn't do a great job. I wish I could have done better. But I do know this. I did try. I did try. And, but there are things that I would say and things I would do. So I remember years ago, my dad was a smoker. And as I found out later, he was what they called a John Wayne, you know, kind of chain smoker. And I, it was from somebody who he wouldn't have cared who he was. He was going to be who he was around them because my dad was very social con socially conscious. And so like, um, this gentleman called me after daddy had died. And I think mom had passed away by then. And he was so kind. He was like, I just heard that your daddy died. And I said, oh, yes, your, your dad died. And I said, yes, he did. Thank you so, so much for your condolences. And, you know, and thank you for thinking enough to call me. And um, and it was somebody who, I think they cleaned the carpets for my parents. And in their home. And um, he said, yeah, man. 
he said, you know, we started talking about my dad and what he had died from and, you know, how his end of life went. And and um, then we we shortly chatted about my mom. But the first thing he said was, yeah, you know, my son told me as soon as I went and told him because they worked together. He said, yeah, my son would go out and, and um, you know, clean the carpets at your parents' house. Or I think he was a carpet cleaner. And he said, yeah, man, he would say that your dad was a a John Wayne kind of smoker. And I said, John Wayne kind of smoker. What does that mean? And he goes that he was essentially a chain smoker. He would light one up, finish it off, put it out, you know, and start another one. And I don't think he literally like took an old cigarette and lit another one, but I knew he smoked a lot. I knew he did because I worked for him for six years. I knew how much he smoked then. I didn't know how much he smoked in the end, which by then he had developed tremendous issues that he should have never even been around smoke, much less smoking. But I remember when our oldest was young, and I may have shared this or I may have not, but I'll just share the story. So we were trying to teach our, um, you know, both of our families had smokers in them. And um, my husband's had more smokers, but yeah, my dad was the smoker in my family. And, um, anyways, I had told our youngest, I said, you know, she was like, one day she asked me, why don't you smoke cigarettes? Why does Papa smoke cigarettes? Da, 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 da. And I said, well, it's a habit, you know, it becomes a habit and then your body kind of wants it. And that's the best you can do for a preschooler. And so she looked at me and, and she said, well, well, why don't you want, why shouldn't you smoke? And I said, well, it's not good for your heart, baby. You know, it's something you don't want to do. You know, you don't want to start that habit. And, you know, pray for Papa that he'll, he'll be able to stop because we love Papa. We want the best for him. So one day in my oldest, very bold personality, which she still has today, her blessing and a curse, you know how that works. Um, she walks up to Papa and says, Papa, you shouldn't smoke because that's not good for your heart. Mommy told me so. <laughs> it's so my dad never said a word to me, but it clearly hurt his feelings. And then my mother came before, you know, all of the friendship and healing had happened. And she gave me a good talking to about that happening. So, and I explained to her where that had come from and, you know, on and on and on. And so she, you know, she let me have it. So the next holiday, I think they came over for Thanksgiving. Um, you know, we lived in different cities, so it wasn't like I could pick up a phone and say, hey, Daddy, or go by his house and say, hey, Daddy. So he came in the door, and I said, after everybody got settled in and said hello, I said, hey, Dad, can you come out here for a minute? And I, we went out in our garage, and I remember telling Daddy, you know, hey, Daddy, I am so sorry that Hannah said this to you. She would have never in a million years hurt your feelings, nor would have I. And she asked me questions, and I answered her, and this is how I answered her, and just like I shared with y'all. And I said, and by the way, as that is being said about you, I wear my sin all over my body. And at that time, I was very overweight. And I said, you know, Daddy, who am I to say that your sin's worse than my sin? You know what I mean? And he, and he kind of laughed and he said, Oh, honey, it's okay. I never thought anything about it. You know, just you know, give me a hug and it's all good. You know how daddies are. And I said, no, daddy. And I mean, I had tears in my eyes. I was like, I would never do anything to hurt your feelings in a million years. And he was just like, Oh, honey, it's all right. You know, we're good. And you know how dads are. And, but I remember thinking it was a truth. It was a truth. So, when I was telling him this, I was trying to explain, you know, look, she pointed out the issue of smoking. And I pointed out that I have sin as well. So, do as I do, or do as I say. So, when my children were raised, I worked really hard to teach them good nutrition. We had a son with severe allergies, like life-threatening food allergies, as well as just allergies and then you know our daughter had a, a, a dangerous allergy our oldest daughter our youngest she kind of has an allergy but it's not major I mean it's not life-threatening and it's not and she doesn't even break out you know what I mean it's just one of those things that she eats and she thinks oh this is uncomfortable I'm not going to do this again and um but I remember going to a doctor for my physical my annual and I said you know 
I really struggle with weight and I've worked so hard all my life. I mean, I, it was such a churn as a child and it was made such a big deal that it became worse. And, you know, I mean, that was essentially what we came to the, you know, the, the understanding of. And, um, yeah, I was dropped off at 10 years old at Weight Watchers and I had been on many diets before then. Not many 10 year olds need to be on a diet. And when I look back at pictures now, I absolutely never needed to be on a diet at that time. Um, I wasn't the thinnest girl, but I by far wasn't even chubby. I was just a big kid. I was tall. I was as tall as I am now in fifth grade. So yeah, I'm bigger than the other kids. Okay. You know, but I wasn't big, big. And, um, anyways, and it was a lot of humiliation. My sister and I have talked about this since then. She's like, oh my gosh, because I never even knew. She said, I knew things happened, but I, I, and I was furious about it, but I didn't know all this stuff that went on with it. And I said, oh yeah, there was a whole lot of stuff that went on. And, um, which was good to talk it out. But, so as I went and spoke to this doctor and he said, well, what are your children like? And I said, well, they're all very thin. And he said, really? He said, why is that? I said, because we talk about what good nutrition is. We talk about what's healthy choices. What are the best choices? When they were little, I didn't like introduce sugar right away. And I didn't, you know, I, I didn't keep it from them, but I didn't, you know, I didn't let my kids eat candy and drink soda and all that kind of good stuff. And if they eventually got to the point where they went through and got a Happy Meal, then, you know, once in a blue moon, yeah, they could have a Sprite because it was caffeine free or they could have a juice or, you know, whatever they want at that point. And he said, you know what? That, what you did is exactly what you should have done. And what you did offered your children a lifetime of knowledge. And he said, and good for you. You're breaking the cycle. And I said, but how does that work for me? And he said, I, he said, your metabolism, you know, we all know you're totally messed up. You know, besides other issues that cause you to gain weight. He said, because um, I have. A, a major hormonal issue and um, with you know anyways long story short um, it's not justification it's just reality and um, and my oldest as she got older and got pregnant her issue kicked into play and it caused her to gain a little bit of weight and she's not obese she just has baby weight basically to use lose but you know is she as thin as she wants no but I don't know if we ever are but anyways but the point being is I still have to live that out. You know, I go see my cardiologist once a year and he knows what my diet is. And I'm like, you know, I got to be honest with you. I love chocolate. And he goes, I don't know how you don't have chocolate. He said, you know, Chris, you, you already give up all this food. You know, you're a vegetarian and, and vegan and plant-based. And, you know, and at that time I was, I was vegan. And I said, look, I love cheese and I love chocolate. Those are my two downfalls in life. And carbs are pretty good sometimes. I don't eat a lot of carbs, but, and now I'm going gluten-free, so it's a different kind of carb. But anyways, all I'm trying to say is, is that we live this life. We, we have an opportunity to live what we say or we don't. So is that true in our walk? Yes. Trust, trusting in God, trusting the Lord is not only me saying it, but living it. Yes. 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 Yes, yes, yes. So, as a result of my own struggles, I could somehow try to introduce healthy things for my children. You know, they're all doing great health-wise. You know, they're all doing great um, in their physicality. You know, they, they are healthy kids. And I'm thankful for that. I pray that no one has the struggles I've had. That has always been my prayer. But I also know that that's what made me sensitive to others too, you know. So it's a blessing and a curse, no doubt. But something that I do have to try to live out. I could compare myself to a young Peter, brave and bold for the things of the Lord. Remember Peter, the rock? is what his name means. I remember my best friend in college said, uh, well, in high school too, we were best, best friends. And um, she would say, your husband reminds me of Peter, or back then your boyfriend. Your boyfriend reminds me, he's a Peter. And I was like, well, that's not very nice. And so let's talk about this. So I could compare myself to a young Peter, brave and bold for the things of the Lord, so much so that when he saw Jesus walking on the water, he asked to walk on water too. 
So we think about Peter. I'm going to read this the rest, and then we're going to talk about it. It says, Eagerly he jumped into out, out into the water to complete his heart's desire. But when Peter looked around, his trust began to falter. He took his eyes off Jesus. He, his understanding told him that what he was experiencing was unattainable. And he would, and as he leaned on his understanding, he began to sink. So, first off, let's give Peter a break. Nobody else said, hey, Jesus, I want to walk on that water like you. He believed in Jesus. But when he took his eyes off the Lord and he let his own heart reason it out, he failed. What's that like in your life today? I've got a lot of things. Weight and health is one of them. I'll flat out admit it. That's true. The Lord is asking us to, it, it, that's in my life. Sorry, I meant in my life. <laughs> the Lord is asking us to trust his path despite the noise, despite the pain, despite how hard or scary it is right now or will be. Trust. He knows we have plans. His are better. That's another great title. He knows we can't see the end, but he is both Alpha, the beginning, and Omega, end. More reading Proverbs 4, 23, Matthew 14, 28 through 21. I, that's got to be 31. And I checked that. I think it's 31. Okay, Revelations uh, 22, 13. Reflections are your, are you surrounding your heart and will to the Lord so he can lead you. What is stopping you from trusting and letting go of your fears? Lay them at the cross today. What a good devotional today. Wowzer. Okay, sorry. I still have, I must have really spilled a lot more tea than I thought I did. It's everywhere. <laughs> sorry, guys. Um, okay, I'm going to hurry because I do not want to keep you guys too long. Okay, so you guys know I pre-did my pages and I love this part. So, for my title, I am going to use, um, I'm going to put His Plans Are Better. And I get this from here. Trust, He knows we have plans. Um, but his are better. I'm going to put his plans are better. So, sorry. Okay, and I think, guys, I am getting to where I'm running out of good little stickers. Okay. You, know, you get to this point in the devotional and you realize, man, I'm really just going through stuff, aren't I? <laughs> but that's okay. That's a, that's a great problem to have, you know? So, and these letters are also from By the Well for God. They have like an additional offering, and I always buy them. And I think I'm getting to the point where I'm going to start buying two of them. So, and also the little tile letters too. Oh, him. I meant his. Sorry. Ugh. Isn't this always what happens when you're like pinched for time? You do the wrong thing. Okay, I'm just going to save that over here on my glass. I'll put that up. But, um... But I always order the letters. Um, I know a lot of people like the thinner, you know, see-through letters. I am mixed on that. You know what I mean? So, you do what you like. Um, I like where you can't see through them. I really do. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I like when you can, um, then I can put them on um, scrapbook paper. So, um, you know, you just have to see what works for you. Well, guys, let me move this over. I can see a little bit better. There we go. So, if you didn't notice, yesterday I went to, of all places, the Dollar Tree. And I came home with a bag full of lights, light bulbs. I didn't know that they had the LED light bulbs there. I don't know that they're the best deal, you know, financially. But I do know it's nice to have light in here. And <laughs> as I get ready to move out, um... <laughs> We started packing things out yesterday. We are not 100%. And I think it's going to take a lot more than I thought. I thought it was going to take a day, and it's not. Because I'm literally sorting as I go. Um, I'm going to think I'm going to do his plan is better. Not his plans. I know he has a lot of plans, but you know what I mean. Oops, I pulled off two, one, uh, two eyes, I mean. Um is and then I'm gonna say better yep I want to make sure that was the word